All right, class, this is Dan Casino, it's Dr. Casino. Uh, due to overwhelming demand and desire not to have to do this about 15 individual times, what I'm going to be doing here is demonstrating for you exactly what I want you to do uh, to run your analysis for your final project. So what I'm going to do here, working with the data sets, uh, this is the GSS, the General Social Survey. This is not the data set you're working with your final project, so you can't just copy exactly what I do. Uh, but we are, it will be a similar data set to this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a number of independent variables. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to create a variable for marital status, create a dummy variable for that, age, gender, race, uh, at least one race dummy variable, income, education, party ID, how often they attend religious services. We're going to use those as my independent variables, along with at least one interaction effect. We're going to use the interaction effect of party ID and how often they attend services uh, in order to predict feeling thermometer towards Muslims. So, uh, probably the video quality isn't exactly where it should be, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along uh, well enough. So, uh, let's get started. It shouldn't take too long. So, the first thing I'm going to do is identify the independent variables that I want to use. Now, there's some of these that we have to use, these control variables that we know are always important. So, the control variables we're talking about are going to be things like gender, race, income, education, if we're doing anything even remotely political, party ID. So we're going to make sure to use all of those. So let's start. Uh, the first and the easiest one I can get to right here, I can see I've got my variable for marital status. So I see, I look under my label, that's this column right here, and I see I've got my variable for marital status. First thing we do is check my values. One is married, two widowed, three divorced, four separated, five is never married. I, when I look, I can see 9 is not applicable, I mean the question wasn't asked. And so I look, I see under my missing values column, I see that was already set to missing. So my missing values are already taken care of. However, when I look at this variable, there's not really any interpretable order to it. I can't really look at it and say, okay, as you go up by 1 on your marital variable, you get something. There's no order to it. So 1 is married, 2 is widowed, okay, so widowed is less married than married. But is divorced less married than widowed? Is separated less married than divorced? Is never married? I, there's no real order to it. So what I want to do is turn this into a series of dummy variables. In this case, what I want to do is I want to pull out the people who are at that category 5, the never married people. So I'm going to take a dummy variable just for those never married people. And because I believe that those people, people who are never married, are in some way different than people who have been married and, or were married at some point in the past. So let's separate those people out. So I'm going to separate out the people when marital equals 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recode in a different variable. And my input variable, the variable I'm looking for, the variable I'm going to be working with, just scroll down a little bit, and I've got marital status in there. And my output variable, I'm going to call it single. You know, so I'm using all lowercase uh, because they are, SPSS is case sensitive. So I don't have to worry about whether I had uppercase S or lowercase S or whatever. So if you're going to do with uppercase or lowercase, just go the whole way. I'm also going to put a variable label in here. You don't actually have to, uh, but it helps keep things straight for later. So it's going to be has respondents never married. Not the best grammar, but it is just for my own purposes. Old new values. So my value of 5 on my old one becomes a value of 1. So that's all my single people are going to get 1. My system missing is always going to stay system missing. And all other values, that is everything that was not system missing, uh, is going to get a value of 0. So I've got a new variable uh, where people who are single and have never been married get a 1. Everyone else gets a 0. Continue. Check this, marital will become a variable called single, and go. So we're good. And if I want to make sure that worked properly, I can go all the way down to the bottom. And you notice there's a whole lot of variables in here, probably about 3,000 variables in here. Uh, never mind, looks like we're very close to 5,000. Uh, and there you go. I've got my single variable right down here. I can double click over there on the left, and I go back to my data view, and congratulations that we've got it over there. So single is going to be the first of my independent variables. All right, next, let's go back in my variable view and let's take a look at some other variables I think might be useful. So I'm going to take a look at, for instance, age. Now, it can be difficult to find these variables, so there's a couple tricks we can use. The first is I can actually do a Control F. So just pressing the Control button and F, and I can actually just do a search for age. It's going to search in this column for label, it's just going to find 
anything that's labeled with age. I go down, age when first married, well that's not what I'm looking for, and there we go, age of respondent. So, age, age of respondent, all right, we take a look at my variables. All right, it says 89 is basically a maximum value on this. Remember, it's not going to tell me every, every age between 16 and 88, which are just whatever age they were. Uh, it, but I can take a look at this and go, okay, 89 or older. 89 means 89 or older. And my missing values in this, 98 and 99, and those are already set to missing along with an extra value of zero, which we probably don't need, but no reason to take it out. So that variable is already set up just fine. I've got age. We're good. If I didn't like the name of this variable, I could go ahead and change it, uh, although really there's no, no reason for me to do so. All right, so next, let's go for sex. Let's find that variable, and there we go, respondent's sex. When I look at respondent's sex, I click on my values. I have one is male and two is female. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, because this is an interpretable order. As you go up by one point, you become female. So there's an interpretable order to that. Even though sex is a nominal level variable because there's only two categories for it, we can in essence treat it as if it is ordinal. As a result, we can just leave that alone. If we wanted to, we could recode this into a new variable, uh, but we don't really have to. Uh, the most important thing we'll have to keep track of is exactly what the order of this is, that one is male, two is female. To help me keep track of that, let me actually go to down here and change the and just type that into my label just to make it easier for me to remember what's going on there. So I've got marital status, age, and sex. Uh, just looking right here, I see, oh, I've got education right there, the highest degree they've completed. Uh, the variable here is called degree. So I see zero is less than high school, one high school, two junior college, three grad, bachelor, four graduate. It's a little wonky. Uh, I don't know that junior college is halfway between. I probably, you know, honestly, I probably should turn this into a series of dumb variables for people who have got college degrees versus less than college degrees. Uh, but, you know, this isn't bad, and my guess is that when I run a frequency table on this, there's not going to be too many people in there. So let's just check and see what this looks like. If I go to Analyze, Descriptives, Frequencies, and go down to Degree. I just hold my cursor over there, high school school completed, it's education, or if I go down to degree, look at my frequency table, waiting for it to load, this is a giant data set so it's going to take a little while to do this, uh, but the size of the data set actually is a benefit for you, because uh, it means you're going to be more likely to find significant variables. We see, all right. The vast majority of what's going on here is happening at the high school level. 51% of the people that have a high school degree, 17% uh, have a bachelor's degree, 9% have a graduate degree. You know, there's, this junior college is a little wonky, but there's not too many people in there, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, we'll just let that one go. So I've, got, so I've got my education variable, and that variable is the one called degree. Next, let's go ahead and get my race variables. So, uh, again, I can look, or I can just go around and try and look for it, but I can just do a control F and type race, find next, and there we go. Race, I'll respond right under gender. So, of course, we know we can't really work with race the way it exists pretty much ever. But this race is a little weird. I've just got one white, two black, three other. Well, even though it's pretty simple, there's still no real order to it. Zero is missing. I look down here, I see zero is already listed missing. We're fine. One white, two black, three other. Well, again, I can't interpret that. So I need to turn that into a dummy variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my variable race. I'm going to create one dummy variable for white and one dummy variable for black. So let's do that. I'm going to go transform. Again, recode into different variables. Get rid of this old one I've got there. Going through all of this like this is actually kind of a pain. Uh, in general, we would just type things in uh, using the uh, using the editor that allows us to type the commands in. Um, you know, it makes it can make life a little bit easier, but 
don't worry about it. this will work just fine. Just have to scroll around a little bit in order to find things. So I'm going to create first a variable for white. And remember, one was white, so I'm going to call my label my variable is a respondent white. So on my race variable, the first we're going to set system missing to system missing. All right, see this is actually already still here from the last time, so actually we can just leave all that. I just know this five to one isn't going to work. I want value of one becomes a value of one. And everything's set up basically the way I need it now. A value of 1, which was white, becomes a value of 1. Everything else becomes a value of 0, and all the system missing variables stay exactly where they are. If it wasn't already typed in, I'd just go back and do what I did previously in order to get it. So boom, 1 equals 1, everything else is white. All right, next, I want to create a dumb variable for black. So let's go back, again, transform, recode in different variables. Instead of become white, I'm going to call it black, and it's now going to be is respondent black. And when I go in here, I can keep everything else based the way it is, except a value of 2 is now become a value of 1 in the new one. So the value of 2 on the old one, the race, that was black, that becomes a value of 1. So everyone else gets a 0. So now I've got a variable that's 0 for everyone, unless you're black, in which case it's 1. Or for system missing, of course, we want to ignore you. And OK. Uh, this is actually telling you what the command it actually executed when you did that is. So if you want, you can actually type this in, and I said, it actually works out a little bit easier to type this into your, uh, to your editor, 